video games Whoa. are for nerds. Aww. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. That's why you're listening to The Week in Gaming, the only gaming podcast that breaks down the last seven days and tears games apart from the inside. Ugh. So forget your worries, open your ears, and join Simon Miller and a co-host for the entertainment chatter you need. Also, screw Dark Souls. Hello and welcome to The Week in Gaming. My name is Simon Miller, and as always, I am joined by the one and only, my man Sam Bishop. Sam, how are we today? Yeah, doing very good, doing very good. How good. are you? I'm good, I'm good. We took last week off because I screwed up, which we're, going to talk about in one, <laughs> which we're going to talk about in a second. But as always, we're back and we will continue to, yeah, just talk to you about everything that's happened in the last seven days when it comes to games. Technically, it should be 14 days, but I don't think anything happened in the week we were off anyway. It's one of those things where games, as always, in January just went quiet. So it's like, ah, we'll get to it. Um, but as always, I want to shout out to everybody on Patreon as well, patreon.com forward slash Simon316, who does support the podcast there. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So thank you very much. Even if you can just throw a dollar into the hat, it helps so much. So all my love and hugs to those people. Uh, right, Sam. Uh, we had a little chat before we came on about what we we're going to talk to you today. Again, not a lot has been going on. You know, it's it's kind of that thing where, I mean, Resident Evil, the, I think the reviews actually dropped just now, did they not, as we're recording this? Yes, I think the embargo just lifted. I think it has. So if I, I tell you what, I tell you who always smashes out those hey here's every single review is vg247 so there it is boo gonna reach you 24 7 so yeah i mean i haven't played a lot but i know you've been playing it sort of on and off through the preview event uh, i mean mostly you're just going through gamespot gave it zero i mean well that's got to not be that can't be correct at all what does that even mean I ignore that a statement score <laughs> i'm just hang on that's confusing i'm just looking through it now uh they gave it a nine well, there's a typo right there for you, VG to zero. Uh, PC games and eight games be eighty five out of hundred. Game of four nine point five. PC game eighty nine out of hundred. US game of four point five out of five. And you're a gamer gave it a recommended, which I think kind of, you know, sums it up, right? People are, are really liking this game. How much did you play at preview stage? I've only played sort of around the first hour at the moment. Yeah, I played a few hours in the middle of the game and um, the one shot demo. So, oh, I love it. The one shot demo I thought was excellent. I mean that that for me. It could be a game in itself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I love stuff like that. I, you know, one of my favorite things is when you finish Resident Evil Four and you could just unlock the dual magnums. Uh, so yeah. the, the one shot magnum, you just walk around shooting everything with one. Oh, so satisfying. I know that's a different concept, but I like those twists. Yeah, I, I just got stressed during it because I like to take in the lore and stuff, and I like looked stuff. I've not, I've got no time. I've got no time for this diary. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I've got to keep moving. How far did you get in it? Did you finish it? Uh, yeah, 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 I think I did because I think I ended up going the other way and rushing a bit too much. Like, move out of my way, zombies. I've not got time for you. I've only got half an hour. <laughs> it's true, right? But that's what I like. And I think that kind of sums up the game uh, on the whole. Like, I never played Resident Evil 2, so I kind of get that I'm coming at it from a different... Because it's there for nostalgia, right? It's, it's there to you know play this game you played 20 years ago or whatever, but in a modern day on a PS4, Xbox One, you know, with all these bright, fancy colours on it and stuff. But... And I, I never played, because I never played, the only Resident Evil I ever played was the first one. And that's and I played Resident Evil 4 onwards, but sort of everything between those two I just never got around to because I was a kid, I had a Nintendo machine, blah, 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 blah. But I, I just thought, I, I, it's difficult for me to say because I'm going off what I've read, and you'll probably be better off to answer this. But it kind of, the cool thing to me was, while I'm sure it takes a lot of inspiration from that game, for example, when you are, you know, like boarding up windows you can basically do it instantly you know if there's a zombie outside you could just magically board up you can just board up some windows and it will never get in even though it absolutely makes no sense like a very old school mechanic but it also felt like to me that it really had dragged it into the 21st century like it didn't feel to me like this was just oh we've upgraded it and you know we just wanted to have the same experience but it looked nice it felt very very much like it had been tweaked and polished and changed and shifted to where i imagine some people may play and go oh wow this is not what I was expecting at all because it's sort of come far further than I assume Capcom would have put the time and money in. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think if you look at the Resident Evil remaster they did with the first game, what four years ago, something like that, um, that showed its age a lot because of the controls and the cameras and stuff like that. I think they sort of dragged that 
kicking and screaming into the modern day. Um, but I think what they did here was they retained everything that made it unique in terms of the actual content in the game, but they made it sort of what we're used to seeing in the third person shooters these days. Yeah. Um, so it's not too action orientated. It's still survival horror, but they just, it's a bit smoother. It's a bit less clunky and it just shows how strong the core concept was in terms of all the puzzles and in terms of the actual, you know, the horror. Cause like, in a way, it was scary back in what ninety eight was it, but now with this new lighting and the, you know this whole terrifying station they've put together, it's it's still terrifying, but in a different way. I totally yeah, and I think that like you said, the really cool thing about it is that Capcom knows exactly what Resident Evil is in two thousand nineteen. Yeah, and they can go back to the original or the the second one in this instance and go, okay, what do we need to keep? What do we need to get? rid of what have people accepted be that with you know resident evil 7 or whichever the last one was biohazard whatever they called it but also what do we have to do to make sure that a modern audience that does come to it such as me doesn't feel put off by it and i think i think you hit the nail, <coughs> excuse me i think you hit the nail on the head there the absolutely key thing is is this is a survival horror game and yeah. you don't get many survival horrors by third um by sorry sort of triple a publishers anymore it's much more the scene of the of the indie game and, and whatnot i don't know why but you know the, the, the silent hills and the resident evils sort of went away until resident evil came back last year or two years ago whenever resident evil 7 was but that that's what i again i'm only, I'm only a small part into it i know there's two different campaigns so you know i've got a, i've got a lot to go but I just feel like Capcom's been really smart with it. Like, it's an, it's an easy mode if you just want to go through it or you just want to enjoy the scares. It is scary. Or at least, I mean, I, I am the biggest wuss on the planet, but I certainly felt intimidated by it. And it's a very slow, plodding, uh, deliberately so kind of atmosphere to it that really sucks you in. And, you know, it, it makes you feel on edge, which is, the, which is the point. But it's just the amount of fresh stuff. That, again, I'm commenting basically, you know, from what I know. So some of them go, actually, no, they were really innovative back then. But to me, it's the the fresh, yeah, the fresh stuff they put in there without ruining that sort of core that people would expect when they come to Resident Evil Two. And again, to me, maybe some points to such extremes. If you play this for nostalgia kick, you may not get it. You know, you may get it because of some dialogue or you know some some of the environments. But it really does feel like its own thing to the point. If they hadn't recorded Resident Evil Two remake, I don't think many people could have complained. It's really well done. Yeah, and I, I replayed Resident Evil 7 over the weekend. Um, and that's just, like, if people went into Resident Evil from that as well, just from a modern perspective, and did play the old games, I think it's still great as well because you've still got those core concepts that you saw in Resident Evil 7, but it's now in here. It's sort of like, it's just the perfect balance of the modern Resident Evil versus what made the old ones so good. Yeah, and I think as as a, as a I know it's not done for a marketing employee, but as a way to try and maybe drag those old Resident Evil fans back and say, look what we can do now. Please come with us, whatever we do next. I think it's absolutely genius because yeah. you know there's there's so many things that they could have ignored, but they but they didn't, and you know it, it's that's a testament to them too because it's really hard as a developer and somebody that's made that video game to kind of check your ego at the door, as they say. That's a really tough thing to do because. I'm sure, I mean, I, I, I don't know how many of the original people worked on this. Like you said, it was 20 years ago or whenever. But I imagine there must still be a lineage to it. And somebody is overseeing the franchise overall. So to be so just aware of what needed to change, what needed to come, what needed to go. Like I said, we still keep the, you know, there's still all the S rank stuff and the better you do. And I know yeah. some people, I know some people have said that they've gone through each play. I mean, someone said they went through their playthrough in like five and a half hours. And the other one was three and a half hours. But I've also seen people say it took them 10 hours on each. So, you know, I, 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 I never criticize a game for running time because you just don't know, you know, you just don't know what, how people are going to react to it. Some people are going to be good. Some people are going to be bad. I don't think that's a criticism. Uh, absolutely. But, yeah, I, I think that if not, not only has it kind of breathed new life into old Resident Evil, but has absolutely said to people, look, if you want to make a survival horror now, you can. There are things we can do. We can take advantage of the technology. And we really can allow it to stand out in what is becoming an ever you know, more difficult genre to stand out in. So, or at least make your mark. Like, you know, back in the day, survival horrors were making their mark all the time. Hence why I remember these franchises. It doesn't happen now. And oddly, with the game that would have been a part of that has now come back round to do it again. It's great. Like, it's really, really good. And I don't like scary games. And I'm not even a big Resident Evil fan, to be completely honest. Yeah, and uh, it's weird to give it props for this, but, like, it is brutally violent. 
Like the there's one bit where Leon lifts the head up of this officer and he's got his jaw just hanging off and you can just see all the bloody tissue underneath. And like that is crazy detail and like obviously it's a bit again, it's a bit weird to praise it on, but like that that's what sort of Resident Evil like that visceral sort of like zombie zombie violence that's what it's going for right and it's just it looks so good and the lighting looks amazing like it's one of the best looking horror games that's ever been made as well oh yeah no it really really is like it's it's almost better than it should have been or that it yeah. and that it had to be like it's yeah. a remake right I, I read somewhere earlier when i was just doing a bit of you know kind of reading around that they didn't even want to call it remake for a while i hadn't read that story and i can understand why it should be called Resident Evil 2 Homage or something. I don't know. So that would be awful. That wouldn't work at all. But, you know, I, I will say, yeah, maybe they've gone too far in some areas. And like I say, I really want to stress that. If you're like a veteran of the franchise, you may go, oh, it's gone too far away. But Resident Evil 2 is still there. You can still play yeah. Resident Evil 2. Like, I understand that it's not going to look as good as, as you know, they, they could have done here. But that's illogical. That's irrelevant. If you love it that much, that game... You know, that that game still exists, and it really was. Like I said, I, I, I don't expect me to finish it anytime soon because I have to take my time with uh, <laughs> with this stuff because it really does freak me out. I'm not I'm not good at getting through horror games. I really should be playing it on my YouTube channel, but that's too much sometimes. But maybe I will. I've only done it. I've only, maybe I'll start again. I don't know. I mean, literally... It is tough as well, like finding those puzzle solutions if you don't know what you're doing. Because I assume these two to three hour playthrough finishes, they know the puzzle solutions from the original. Um, but it is hard if you don't know what you're doing because just finding the medallions or whatever the obscure puzzles are that Resident Evil has, like it's it's not an easy game. No, and that's I mean, also puzzle games back in the day were never really that straightforward, were they? All the solutions were just like, are you kidding me? How was I meant to, to figure that out to the point it almost felt like they wanted you to ring some kind of hotline <laughs> that, cost, yeah. that cost a bunch of money. And again, you know, talking into what we're, we're chatting about here, that's still there. You know, that heart of 2008, the late, you know, the late, um, the late 90s, it's still there. You can't get rid of that. And I'm sure Capcom decided that, you know, they, they absolutely shouldn't. But yeah, I, I, I think as for me, especially, I actually think I'm probably their target, their target audience, someone that wanted to play more Resident Evil 2 loves a game that looks this good capcom are really good at making you know lovely looking games and this is this is no exception and just all round you know it's great to have a survival horror game in 2019 like this but also one that manages to tick so many boxes that i really didn't think it would have done really good yeah. really really good i'm absolutely surprised i've only done an hour so i mean <laughs> i know that... i want to play more of it yeah for sure no i do i i do and i i, I will maybe i will start again and play it and play it on my youtube channel which is just youtube.com forward to the mirror port rules if you care but that doesn't matter we'll get well i'll let you know i'll, I'll have a think i need to build up it's, it, it's hard if i do it, i'll live stream it because at least then i feel like i've got people playing it with me um yeah that's good you got the company exactly exactly i did that last two on halloween i promised everybody and i left it and i left it i thought no i'll just do it and it was one of the worst 52 minutes of my of my life I, i'm not say talk about survivor horror games i saw somebody had recreated uh pt in dreams have you seen this yeah, oh yeah. my it's just the same like I, yeah. I i haven't played dreams so i don't understand how the mechanics work but how the hell did they do that yeah yeah. Hey, you just, I, think, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you, I mean, I'll do it right now. Dreams PT. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it just comes up. It's the first thing you'll find. And it really has almost been created. I mean, I'm sure there's differences, but it is, it is genuinely awesome. And as soon as I saw that, I mean, Resident Evil 2 is not that scary. There's no point pretending otherwise. I think PT is the scariest game I've ever played. It may be one of the most exp scary experiences I've ever gone through in my entire life. It is awful. Yeah, the only time I've ever watched a playthrough, I've never played it myself. The only time I've ever watched a playthrough is you playing it, and it was it was it was so it was horrible. I was in a room with other people. We shouldn't have been that scary, but I'm not that easily scared either. But oh god, PT looked awful. No, it's horrendous. It, honestly, yeah. man, it is it is one of those games where I don't I don't quite understand how anyone was able to make that kind of atmosphere it's the first and i knew kojima was a smart dude anyway but for me personally in my own gaming adventures it was the first time i was like man that man is a genius because i cannot yeah. figure out how he's managed this to be as terrifying as it is it's incredible uh, but we're getting off tack here the point is <laughs> yeah the point is you you know uh, survival horror games absolutely still have a place i hope this sparks it into life and if you've been if you're a capcom resident evil 2 fan you absolutely should play it and if you've always been interested in resident evil 2 but you're worried about all the rumors like oh you can't you know move and shoot don't worry about any of that it feels like the most modern game ever it looks great so you know if you've got a brand new 4k tv for christmas or whatever you'll enjoy it that genuinely Ooh, i do 
<laughs> oh, there you go. You see? You see? So there is absolutely reason uh, reason to play it. And I've just seen another review go up here. It literally just popped up on my notifications. Another nine. Amazing visuals, a tense horror experience, multiple campaigns and lockables, the best zombies you'll see in a video game. Well, that's not true because that's uh, Left 4 Dead. But we don't, we don't need to worry <laughs> about that. Uh, you talked about how violent it was as well, which is a, a lovely segue into what else I've been doing this week. Uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm sure lots of people did it too, right? The Mortal Kombat 11 had their big reveal. They had streams in America and the UK very nicely and very luckily. I was a, I was I was part of the the hosting the hosting duo for the one over here in the UK. As I said to Sam, didn't realize how big it was until the week came up on me. One of the reasons this podcast was delayed because I didn't realize how much was there to do. I was like, okay, uh, but again, it, it it was awesome. And obviously, I got to play some of the game. I got to see some of the game, and I got to learn loads about the game because I needed to uh, before the stream went live. Sam, did you see anything on it? What's your opinion on Mortal Kombat in general? I don't know if we've ever talked uh, about it here. Before. Yeah, I think we talked about it a week, a few weeks ago, but I've never played any of it, and my knowledge of it is not very good on the fact that it's very violent. I mean, it, it is, uh, it is very violent, and this one is hilariously so. Like, I, I don't, because obviously it's probably one of, if not the most violent, in terms of the games that we know about, it's up there. But it is so over the top. I don't know how anybody could be. Uh, some people go, "Oh, it's offensive." How is it offensive? It's so silly. Yeah. It's you so get to a silly. point where it's just so cartoonishly exaggerated where it's just like it's not even it's not really even blood anymore really is it like, no no exactly it's like you can't you react to it like oh no way and you laugh but you can't go oh that's disgusting because it could never happen in real life like it's just it's you know i always find the worst things are the ones that you could relate to and yeah. you know unless you've met a man called baraka who has ripped your face off and then eaten your brain which I want to throw in there. That is the best fatality I saw. He literally rips your face off like you're John Travolta. He eats it. He like I can't. He does something with it. Then he rips out your brain with his big knife and he takes a bite out of it. And the cool thing with Mortal Kombat 11 is they've embraced this massively. So whereas usually the fatality would happen and we'd switch back to who you know whoever your whoever done the fatality now the camera angle lingers on the last bit of the, of the thing so as baraka is there eating your brain you get a freeze frame you still get blood dripping off the brain it's just like this is absolutely ridiculous but i laughed every new fatality saw i laughed uh, i love all the little tweaks they've done and uh, they've you know they've done small things like now not only do you have your normal sort of health bar you've got an offensive meter and a defensive meter i didn't get to kind of get into that too much but i do know you know as a guy that's played every single mortal Kombat, and i'm not super into them but i know that's very different that always used to be taken care by one probably been influenced by what street fighter does and, and stuff like that but i don't think it's going to yeah. hamper the game i actually think again when you get to mortal Kombat 11 you've got to start making these kind of jumps so you know i think that absolutely works and they've introduced stuff like let me see if i can remember you get crushing blows and you get fatal blows uh, crushing yeah. crushing blows is more about when you parry someone or reverse them at the right time that's when you now trigger an x-ray move so it's far more fluid and organic and those awful words but the fatal blow i may be getting this wrong i'm pretty sure that was called i thought that was really good because you know obviously over the last few years more combat has really tried to embrace the world of esports as all games are doing yeah. And that introduction to the fatal blow basically means when your life is down 30%, you can trigger one of these moves and it will do massive damage if you can land it. And obviously you only get one per game. And it really does add something extra because I saw it. Like one of the cool things they did at this event is they had celebrities playing Mortal Kombat. And it had Chris Eubank Jr., <laughs> which was just the oh, most... Wow. I know, it was, just, it was just the most surreal thing ever. And he was taking on a, a YouTuber called Squeezy. And honestly, Chris Eubank Jr. probably had... You know, two, if he had been punched twice, he would have lost. But he managed to bang out one of these fatal blows at the exact right time. That completely, you know, kind of decimated his opponent's health. And then, I mean, he was mashing away. Of course, he'd never played the game before. I don't think, I think, I mean, I definitely like video games, but I don't think he was a Mortal Kombat fan per se. I mean, I know, that's not true. I'm sure he played Mortal Kombat, but he's not like a pro. But still, yeah. using the skills that he did have, he came back and won. And like all fighting games, as soon as you get that kind of comeback, it just it's something inside you just swells up. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I don't know why that happens. But I think that fatal blow is really going to, to tie into that and get you those kind of, oh, oh, oh. And then, you know, everyone explodes with, with happiness. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was the new characters. Uh, Scarlet comes back. She's from Mortal Kombat 9. She was a DLC character. Not going to lie, I had Mortal Kombat 9. I never used her. Uh, I don't think I bought any of the DLC stuff, but you know, it certainly got a big evasion there. And I looked online and people were quite excited about it. Uh, there's also a new character called Chronica, uh, who's going to act as the uh, sort of main boss of Mortal Kombat 11. 
and she does something. So the, the, the storyline at some point, I've played all the storyline stuff. I actually think that's the best thing that Mortal Kombat ever introduced was there. St- basically, rather than just do a single player where you just take on random people, they've yeah. carved it into a story where you play other characters and you play the good guys, the bad guys. It's really good. But she is somehow going to reset the timelines, which I, you know, that's way above what I know, but it sounded cool. But the real, the real badass inclusion from my end is a new character called Gearus. Called Garrus, I think it's Gearus. Looks like uh, he's got an Egyptian vibe to him. But his kind of special move is he can muck around with the timer. So the 60 second countdown clock, like once per game, you can either add 30 seconds to it or take 30 seconds away. And I just thought, how, okay. is, yeah, how has no fighting game ever done that? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's the ultimate troll move, but I'm all right with that. Anyone that's followed my career knows that trolling is uh, uh, positive, funny trolling, I mean, not the bad kind. But I saw so many people kind of, you know, beat down on their opponents. And then use this move, get rid of 30 seconds on the clock, and then just win the match via like a health win. And I was like, oh man, that's so good. It's so, I mean, it's such an asshole way to win a, a fighting game. But again, it allowed more, it allows Mortal Kombat 11 to have this unique edge that other fighting games don't. And it made me laugh. And I think that's what I would say overall for Mortal Kombat 11 is few games can I sit down and only play for a little bit and see for a few hours actually crack me up. But it did it time and time again because it's so ridiculous. And as well as things with that timer thing, like there's so many fighting games these days, you really need to do stuff different. And like that, that's the kind of thing where I'm just like, oh, okay, cool, that sets it apart. And I think that's what Mortal Kombat needs, especially with Street Fighter and all these other games sort of ruling their fighting scene. Well, it's true because Soul Calibur 6 came out last year. I think it was 6. And yeah. I like Soul Calibur, but there was nothing really there that made me go, oh, I want to go play another Soul Calibur. And again, if, you know, if I found it cheap or, you know, I found it on whatever, I would still play. I do like Soul Calibur, but I just kind of felt like Mortal Kombat has done more and i get they have to it's mortal kombat 11 you can't rest on your laurels even though they do have an incredibly you know dedicated fan base but you know this to me i think there's enough there to not only appease the people that are going to play it regardless but i actually think more people may be interested like i think it does a really good job and Mortal Kombat has always done a good job of being accessible but deep for people that want to learn it but i think this goes once and i'm just speculating again i played this for a few hours and i did have a good day so i'm sure that you know influenced my decision but i think this is going to go one step further and try and balance it so you're going to have the esports crowd and all those little things you need to take care of that is going to happen but it's just not going to affect the people that want to sit on a couch and play it and you could argue that was the problem with street fighter 5 right it came out esports ready but it didn't really come out player ready and that and that was the thing that kind of buried it i don't think we're going to get the kind of that kind of problem uh problem with this so you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, but it certainly impressed me. And again, it was on my list when we did our, you know, 10 games that uh, we, we, we think you should play in 2019. And it, it's still there now. If anything, well, 100%, it's, it, it, it's higher. It's higher on the list. And I, it comes out April the 23rd, I believe. And yeah, yeah I, you know, I got to see Meza Erzel and uh, Klasniak from Arsenal play as well, which as an Arsenal fan was somewhat surreal. Uh, to see a guy that's won the World Cup also trying to win a Mortal Kombat tournament, uh, but yeah, it was um, it was it was a good night. And again, if you're interested in Mortal Kombat at all, I would employ you to at least check it out. May not be for you, but it may be worth a look. So I guess I already know the answer to this question, but would you say it's better than Mortal Kombat X or Ten or whatever it was? I I think they've done more. I like Mortal Kombat Ten, but this one feels like a bigger step. That one to me was the classic. Oh, we've got some, we've brought some old characters back, and we've got some new characters, and there's probably some more things in there that I didn't notice because, again, I'm too much of a of a casual fan. But for me, sitting down and learning about it and chatting to the devs and knowing what I do know, I certainly felt like there is more here. This feels like a real big step forward for Mortal Kombat. Doesn't mean that it is, but that's what it felt like to me. So, yeah. Are you a Tekken fan? Out of curiosity. I like Tekken, but it would. I would. I would put it. What would? Where would I put it? No, I just Tekken probably be my top five potentially. Oh. I don't have to think about it, but I do like Tekken. Yeah. Oh. I thought there's a follow up question to that. You just no, to, it's just, just just one new if you like Tekken. Yeah, no, I like Tekken. I like, what don't I don't like my kind of line is like stuff like Blaze Blue. That's too much for me. It's too, it's a great game, but it's too hardcore. Like I just yeah. I just get lost. So. Blaze Bro is not really my thing. When Street Guilty Gear and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's too much for me. And when Street Fighter goes that way as well, which it certainly has in the past, it's too much. I need, I'm happy to sit there and learn a fighting game. I'll never be as good as you know some of these people are. They're amazing. But I need, I always need my fighting games to have a little bit of a twist 
in yeah. the sense that oh we know that idiots are going to play <laughs> that's that's what yeah, I, I need i totally agree yeah and i'm that idiot like, i i need to know that when i panic and start mashing which i always do something cool will happen because i'm a giant child <laughs> Uh, and they've done that they've done that really really well so um yeah no, it's a really really good game i know some people are going oh of course miller you you know you hosted the event well i would be, I will, I, hopefully in the past i've shown that uh, i'm a bit more integral than that but uh yeah really really good uh i like I, I was excited about it before i'm excited about it now scorpion is just a cool character there was actually if you want to look up a, a cosplayer called maul i never heard of him he turned up uh in scorpion cosplay my word was it good like, genuine, I heard a cosplayer was coming. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I was like, dude, man, you must have spent so much money on this. It was amazing. So I'm going yeah. to give him a shout out as well. I don't know how they do it. No wonder there's so much money in it. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. That's it. I'm trying to get anything else. No, that's it for Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, actually, there was a story that came out. But NetherRealm said that they're looking into cross-platform play. I'd love that. I'd love yeah, that. That'd be cool. It, it would be. If you can get the because obviously the, the the problem with all fighting games online is you have to be as smooth as possible. But you know, if we can do it with Fortnite, why the hell can't we do it with Mortal Kombat? I was surprised that we didn't do it with Red Dead, you know. I thought if any developer had the sway to say, look, we want this, it would have been Red Dead. But that's not cross platform, is it? As far as I know. No, but I guess if any developer has the balls to be like, no, and you'll have to deal with it, it would be Rockstar You're right. as well. You're right. You're you right. look at it that way as well. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Because they don't have to be pressured because they could just do what they want. And they'll still make a bajillion. What did, they, did we get <laughs> Did we get sales figures for that in the end? Did anything come no. out? Like, I wanted to... I, I was looking into that and then I just forgot. And the last one we got was no, November and it sold through... It sold through $725 million. That was the first three days. And apparently, it topped 15 million copies in eight days. But then we didn't... I mean, was Wikipedia got anything? I just I don't know because I thought it was on to do ridiculous numbers. No, that's all it's got. It sold seventeen million copies in two weeks. <laughs> what is that? What a ridiculous video game that is! So stupid. Yeah. Fair play, Rockstar. Anyway, I also read about Mortal Kombat Eleven that they're going to improve the PC support as well because I know Mortal Kombat Ten had awful, awful PC port. So Did it? I didn't know job. that. So wow. what are they going to do? I didn't know that. Well, I think they just, um, someone from the team has talked uh, in an interview just saying that their priority is to, I think they've got a studio called Q-Lock, um, which has made the Dark Souls remastered and Injustice 2 PC ports, and um, they're going to be handling it to make sure it's all all up to spec. Yeah, I tell you, man, I, I think this is a big push for them. I think they, they think the time is right and they're going to try and... I mean, they've already got a huge fan base. I think, they, I think they're trying to do something big with this. Hence why they had this big reveal. They're kind of coming out at a time not many games do. I mean, April isn't really, you know, oh, April, the time for games to come out. So I'm excited. And also they're doing a Switch version as well. Which Yeah, that's you know, really cool. I, yeah. I was surprised. Every time I see it, it's out for Switch, I'm just like, oh, yeah. Is that Switch? The, That's bad. Apparently, it's coming out day and date as well. I mean, that could change, obviously. But apparently, yeah. you know, I saw a news article come out the other day, and you know, the developers said, "No, no, no." Still, you know, they, they didn't show it at the event, but it's probably because it doesn't look as good, to be honest. Because nothing on the Switch will do. That's not why you play it on the Switch. Obviously, the big question is, will it have green blood, <laughs> like like it yeah. did back on the on the SNES? Oh, it always still makes me laugh. That's mad to me. Like, I'm just like, you know, that when you just sit back and realize how far games have come like can you imagine before the switch was out it's been like in three years you'll be able to play the new mortal Kombat, just whack a screen out get some joy cons get these little controllers and just beat each other up on the train or I'm on out, a right? plane around a picnic that was a weird example um but yeah <laughs> like you can just you can just whack out Mortal Kombat wherever that's amazing honestly and it's like um you, you see celebrities or whoever in an airport doing traveling and they're playing like xboxes in those cases and it's yeah. just like how, like how, how, how is this? Where, where are we? It's it's nuts. Like it's absolutely nuts. But uh, I like it, man. I, I like where we've arrived. And talking about that, and you know, I mean, it's not really video gamey, but I think it ties into a certain point of view. You know, you and I both agreed it was something worth discussing. Is the Oscars got announced? I mean, I think literally like an hour before before we started doing this. And obviously, there's nothing too video gamey video gamey in there. However, Black Panther got nominated for an Oscar. Which I think, you know, in terms of superhero movies, which, you know, there's, there's kind of a culture there, I think. You know, I would imagine there's a big crossover between people that like superhero films and video games. It's kind of a modern culture, if you want to call it. But yeah, to get, you know, Black Panther getting a, a best movie um, nomination, which is the first, you know, superhero movie to do so, I think it's massive. 
Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's just it's strange that that's the first one. I mean, it's not that strange because a lot of people have speculated as to why that is, which I won't go into. But like, it's just The Dark Knight didn't get a Best Picture nomination. The Dark Knight, like what? What? Yeah, I know. And, which is a which is a brilliant movie. It's not even a superhero movie. It's just a brilliant movie. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy that this is that this is the film to get into the best picture category from superhero. I'm not saying it shouldn't, but it's just mad, it's just crazy to think. Oh yeah, no, it really, really is, and I think that it, and it, maybe it goes to uh, you know to show. And actually, you know, I mean, Heath Ledger did win the posthumous Oscar, obviously for the Joker. Yeah. So I, you know, I think you got to mention that when we're talking about this stuff. So you know, it has been recognised before, but then you know, you mentioned controversial stuff. A lot of people then say, well, it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't have died, and I'm like. Not what you should be focusing on here, friends. <laughs> like, yeah. I just think, celebrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we can. Uh, I think that we can. Uh, we can not worry about that. I don't think it matters. I don't think anybody is upset. Um, but yeah, like it just. I mean, I've seen Black Panther, and it is a really good. It is a really good movie, and it almost ties into that thing where people feel like they have to caveat. Oh, it's a really good superhero movie. No, it's not. It's just a good movie. Like you know, it's a good movie with strong performances where the you know the the lead characters just so happen to have superpowers. I mean, that's it. And you 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 could say that for you know nearly nearly anything that you watch. And hopefully, it does open the door for for other. Mo- I'm not saying that I think. You know, I, I would actually, you know, I wouldn't say that many of the superhero films I have seen actually deserve an Oscar, if I'm, or at least deserve to be nominated. Some do, but I think by and large, if you went through every one, I don't think the Avengers deserves an Oscar. You know, it, at least not by the standards of what the Oscars are. You know, I, I personally wouldn't give one to the Avengers. I wouldn't give one to Iron Man. In fact, the only ones I can actually think I would give an Oscar to, well, I'm biased. Any Batman film would get one, but that doesn't count. I don't deserve to be included in that because just, I'm just being an idiot. But, you know, other than... You know, Black Panther and any Batman movie, maybe the original Superman. Was it 1970? I don't yeah, remember. Chris that is a brilliant movie. Like, I yeah. think that 1970, yeah, I was going to say 1979. Um, that is a brilliant movie. And obviously it's aged today, but I, I, I think his portrayal and just the way... Yeah, just just the way that it all comes together, I just think is, is brilliant. I, I think that's a wonderful movie. And I think it's heartwarming too. So, but yeah, yeah I, I just thought it was massive when I saw it come out. Also, just because I shouldn't say this, but I will. I'm not going to say why. Have you seen The Favourite, which also got nominated for Best Picture? No. Right, that's, yeah. that's brilliant. I saw that by accident because I, I thought that was the Mary Queen of Scots film with Margot Robbie that's coming out. And I got confused. And I sat in there like, wait, wait, what is this? Genu- best one of the best mistakes I've ever made movie-wise. Genuinely awesome. But also, and let's hope that nobody important listens to this podcast... Even though it's not out in this country yet, I may or may not have been able to see Green Book too. Now, <gasps> now I, I will say this: I did not see it via illegal means. The way I was able to watch oh. it was completely legal. It wasn't downloaded or off a dodgy site or anything like that. It was completely okay. legal. But I can't say how I got it because I don't think the person would get in trouble. I didn't do anything wrong. I just want to point that out. But I have seen it. And as we move on, but I, I want to say this: anyone you know that is into movies, and I know it's not a movie podcast, but the Oscars are a big deal. It, it's a brilliant film. It is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Like um, I saw Stan and Ollie as well, actually, over the weekend. And the best thing about those two films back to back were they're just two really wholesome, good films with different messages. I mean, The Green Book tells a much stronger the message than Stan and Ollie, but it's kind of this new wave that I've seen in movies recently where they just want to make you feel good. And both yeah. those movies did that. Don't get me wrong, Green Book, you have to go through a lot of hardship. And, you know, especially, again, if you don't know, it is a book about um, the, you know, a, a, I think it's set in the 70s. Anyway, it's set back in the day. And it is, uh, you know, it's about a black musician going through the Deep South. So, you know, uh, for someone like me that knows about that stuff, but probably needs to know more, it's a harrowing watch and it's very difficult. But the ending and the relationships they build, oh man, does it make you you know feel like human race can be good man let's make you know let's get this back together so as we mentioned the oscars i just thought i'd throw out that i'm pleased to see that in there as well and yeah. uh yeah i did not see it illegally i just want to that, that's how, i said like i'm doing it too much <laughs> but it's because i genuinely didn't but i can't tell you how it did because it may get somebody in trouble but it was completely above board and if anyone did find out nobody would get in trouble sounds like i don't mean it Anyway, let's stop talking about that. Is yeah, there let's anything? Move on. Did you, I, mean, I mean, other games that have come out that we haven't talked about. Ace Combat Seven is out, and I just don't care about those games. I, mean, I couldn't I, imagine a game I'd enjoy less. 
<laughs> it's, I just don't know how they've got to seven. I really do. I, I go look at them. I don't know how it did because somebody out there will love Ace Combat 7. They'll be mad that we didn't talk about it. Uh, it's done well. It's, I mean, I'm just going with Metacritic here. Got 81 on Metacritic. Um, let me find a website that I know is... I don't know it sounds horrible, but one, a six axis. Gave it nine out of ten. In Ace Combat 7, dogfighting games have a new Top Gun. I mean, that's the most cliched line ever. However, <laughs> that's How horrible. am I not surprised? I mentioned uh, Top Gun uh, in that game. Uh, that makes me horrible. I take it back. <laughs> I, I'll read you a bad one as well because we've got to be... Let me get to a IGN, right? Ace Combat 7 on Nine Skies is a great-looking arcade flight combat game and zipping over high-quality terrain, trying to establish missile locks and evade pursuers can be a lot of fun, but the experience often gets weighed down by its weird and convoluted but persistent story and poor communications of objectives. I'm not going to play this game. It's not for me. I never i ever ever have understood uh those kind of games not in a yeah, bad way he's got like, a dedicated fan base and i'm sure loads of people will love it but it's just zero percent of me wants to no no yeah, no you just i just don't get it it's the same when hawks came out where you know ubisoft decided they were going to throw their yeah tom clancy's hawks yeah i just thought i don't get it i don't get it at all like it's just not for me um and look people love it right i always wanted to like it. i always loved the idea of uh, dog fighting everything like that but it just never worked it just never worked. Anyway, yeah, I it, think there's just there's there's an audience for flight these flight games, but there's just not many of them. So I guess when Ace Combat Seven came around, everyone's like, yes. Yeah, exactly. Because you just it's like remember when you used to get mech. It's about I know it's a franchise, but I mean the literal sense. You used to get Mech Warrior games all the time. Yeah, and now you just never get them. And I know mech, what a new Mech Warrior game is coming out this year, but I imagine when those do come out, everyone's like, oh, thank goodness, because it's like a dark, it's like a dead genre, isn't it? Like, Same I, with skateboarding games, to be fair. Well, but what's the one that's coming out? Flip, is it called? Or the, the one that they showed at E3? Uh, there's Session, but then there's Session. also Skater XL, which is in early access as well. Skater XL. Horrible, I mean, man. I mean that, <laughs> that's like, are we back in 1997? <laughs> I mean, that is... That, that Extreme is all, Skater, yeah, that's oh, what they should have called it. <laughs> they would do as well. And obviously, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes came out on Switch. Yes. Um, literally four days ago. Now, I liked No More Heroes when it first came out. But I'm amazed that another one has come out, and exclusive to the Switch as well, which is, you know, which is very interesting. I mean, do you do you know anything about? It? Do you care about those games? I know they had a big uh, following, sort of. A while, I mean, they love a bit of uh, Nintendo, don't they? So it's it's a game I'd probably try if it was a bit cheaper. Um, but I don't have any affiliation to the franchise, so it's, it's uh, yeah, it's sort of pass me by really. Yeah, I'm just again just to get trying to make. I like to make sure everybody gets like a taste of what these games are like. I, I can't even find reviews of people that, that's done it, apart from, I mean, The Escapist, I know, 7 out of 10. Travis writes again, doesn't invite you in, okay? If you're unfamiliar with the huge swatch of game history, Grasshopper's Catalog, even Games Industry Business, okay, that's just gibberish. That's not the kind of review I want to read. Trusted reviews. A flawed experience, yet both such a commendable level of creativity amidst its restrictions that I was unusually smitten with it. So there you go. It's classic Suda51. It's a bit weird, but if you can get past that, that weirdness, it'll be all right. Suda 51 is an interesting one. Have you ever played? Because I always find that everybody, usually, there's one Suda 51 game that everybody loves. I'm literally now going to find the one I love because I can't even remember the name because he has done so many games. Do you have one? Do you have one that always sticks out? Or you're like me and you do, but you can't remember the stupid name. I'll have mine in a second. I couldn't name you all of his games. <laughs> well, no, that's true. Is it Shadows of the Damned? Shadows of the Damned. Did you ever play Shadows of the Damned? no it was i mean don't get me wrong it's one of those games i don't think i'd ever give more than seven out of ten to but it was such a solid seven out of ten that i absolutely loved it i played that game from start to finish i remember playing that game and enjoyed it to um to such a degree that i remember the girl i was is a long time ago but the girl i was seeing at the time she wanted to go out for dinner and i was like nah man I want to play Shadows of the Damned. <laughs> that's, a, that's how much it won me over, which is weird because I've never been like that. And looking back now, again, I've got a YouTube video just to remind. Again, it's so, it's just standard action adventure fodder. Like, I, I even this is the, literally the puzzle. I've somehow magic, it's a full walkthrough. And I've somehow actually been able to click the puzzle I was going to talk about where bookcases move and you shoot the magic symbol on them to stop them at the right time so you can get across. I mean, it is, it is as. St standard and as you know i can't think of the right word but it's exactly what you expect it's got boss fights that are mostly shite but i, I played them all I, I i don't get it and i just think suda 51 has one of those games i mean i don't really like it you know lollipop chainsaw nah kind of makes me 
a little uncomfortable. That's just me, though. You know, I, I know I get a lot of heat for saying that, but that's just how I feel about it. What can I do? Everyone's different. I've looked. I've not played a single one of his games. Well, I think if you've played one, you, you should be able to find one that you like, I would imagine. But the problem is, again, trying to find one is uh, is impossible. Um, but there you go. I mean, strikes, it's Travis strikes again. No more heroes. I don't think anything else has come out in the last two weeks. What's the next big game coming out? Is it Anthem? Resident Evil. Resident Evil, yes, yes. And but, Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, my God. Of course, because we need to get somebody else to talk about that because we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm just there for the Cowboys and the uh, and the Disney and the Woody and the Buzz. and the, If I do get it, it's probably unlikely. <laughs> I'll be there for the Disney and nothing else. Exactly. Well, someone's, we said that someone did reach out and I lost their tweet. Tweet us again. I want someone to come on soon with Sam and I. And I'm going to call it Sell Us On... Set us on Kingdom Hearts. Uh, obviously, Capcom also released on Minutia Warlords as well, which was the... Um... Yes, I've heard very good things about that. I yes. heard it described as Resident Evil with ninjas, and I was like, oh, hold on. Have you, ever, great. have you ever played on Minutia, sort of back in the day? No, it was one of those games I just looked at it and like, what? Yeah. And I never played because it was like, what? So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually think what it needed to be relevant was something like this, it, yeah. because it, 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 its mechanics were weird anyway. And I, I certainly think that it... Um, I, I, pro- I haven't played it in a long time, but I remember playing one of the PS2 even sort of a year or so after it was released and thinking, man, this isn't as smooth as you'd expect from a 12-month-old game. Um, and I, I just think it needed a bit of a bit of you know spit and polish, and that's what it sounds like they did with this. Again, I haven't played it. I certainly would give it a go. But everybody says sort of the core game is still really good, and it's all the little tweaks they've done that brings it up to, to speed. The only problem is Capcom are kind of, you know, pasting over it. Because no one's going to play that over Resident Evil. And their marketing team's not going to push that over Resident Evil. So that seems no. kind of crazy to me. No. I mean, it's it's oh, there's a lot of dedicated fans out there. A lot of people were raving about it coming back. Because I, I didn't know it was that popular. It was just sort of like those games I knew existed. But yeah, it's got a lot of fans out there. Well, well, we'll see. So that's out too. Other than that, though, I don't think uh, I don't think anything else has come out. As always, if we miss something, it's certainly not intentional. I know some people get mad about that. They go, you didn't talk about this. And I'm like, all right. It's probably a reason. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably because it's not that. Uh, it's not that fun. Is there any other news that we need to touch on that we that we may have needed to take over the last two weeks that came and was massive? Did anything get announced or anything? I don't think that it did. But I always like to. No. No, I'm I, just. I'm gonna go out and say no. No, I'm just going through everything now to make sure. I don't. Want, I don't want to miss anything. If it. If it did, I do. I just think now we build to Anthem. I think is the next big game we're coming. Well, I mean, you got Metro Exodus before that. Metro Exodus is going to be a strange one. I don't. What, what was their big announcement the other day? It's got a camera in it, right? It's got a photo mode. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah they, they, they it's really... also got De Nuvo, that thing on Steam they won. Hates. What's that? I don't know what that is. What's it's Denuvo? like a DRM anti tampering. Like It's like an anti hacking thing. Whatever. Why aren't people happy about that? I don't know much about that. I PC don't really worlds. know why people aren't happy with it. I think it's linked to technical performance or something. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should talk about Metro Exodus because there was a bunch of pre. I forgot about this. About four days ago, there was a bunch of previews that came out. Um, so, you know, they've done their big. Uh, when's it come out? Is it early February? Uh, it's February fifteenth. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're there. Right. We're in the we're in that launch window. So this is their last their last big push. And honestly, everything I read said kind of what did you put it in your list? Didn't you? Your ten list? Or did you? Yeah, only because I was curious about it. I don't have any uh, ties to the Metro franchise myself. Yeah, well, that's the thing, because I always played the Metro games and always went, there's something missing here. I think they're onto something, but not quite. Every mm. pre, I, Again, I'm not going to lie, I scam, scam read, skim read previews. And everyone said it feels like a culmination of all their work, like in yeah. terms of going through the novel, understanding it, making sure we don't get too bogged down with that because that never works, but also you know, putting the, the, the sheen on it that's necessary in order for it to not only be a good video game, but maybe not be tied down by some of the decisions that other games made before. Like I always felt like it tried to be maybe a bit too unique and it tried things that we didn't actually need to do. Yeah. Uh, and I remember in that last one, there was one scene when you went and got a lap dance and I was like, okay, now we've gone too far the other way. This feels like something that Duke Nukem would have done. I don't think anybody wants to go back to that. But here it sounds like they've taken all of that, made it work, but also gone back to the likes of Half-Life, which people do enjoy and do kind of want to have a new experience with. And got that in there in su- instead. Everyone also says it looks absolutely ridiculous and it's absolutely terrifying in terms of its atmosphere. So I actually think that's maybe... I think you're right, Sam. I actually think that's something to to look out for. I, I, I think it may be... I don't think it's under the radar by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think that more people may warm to it than I would have thought otherwise. 
Yeah, I think just with being in the same month as Anthem, a lot of people are looking towards that because it's obviously a big deal. And that, no, I, don't, I don't think we know what to expect. So that obviously, you can't predict the future, but I think back to Exodus, you're sort of, it looks like it will be good, you know what I mean? Whereas with Anthem, I, 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 I can't tell. I can't tell at all. Um, so I think that's why a lot more people are curious about Anthem because it's just, I don't know, nobody knows what's going to happen with it. No, I mean, Anthem, I mean, talking of Anthem, there's a couple of demos coming out. Uh, the first is the Anthem VIP demo. If you pre-ordered the PC, PS4, PS4 Xbox One version, uh, you'll be able to do that. And there's another one at EA Access as well. And there's going to be demo codes. I think that demo, I don't, I don't want to be too crazy here, but you know, I love Bioware, as we've talked about before. In fact, anyway, we're kind of like two you know, ends of the spectrum when it comes to Bioware. I was a massive fan of them back in the day. I still like them, but I don't really like their most recent output, whereas you've really got into Dragon. You're still playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm doing everything, so I'm not, I'm not going to be done with that for, like, years. Right, so there you go, right? They've got you. And I understand they're different teams, and I know uh, Mike Laidlaw that worked on the Dragon Age stuff for a while has left, and I can't remember where he went, but he went somewhere else. I really think, and, and they, 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 you know, people said, you know, don't judge the demo too much on the main game, because it is different. It's more of a teaser, and just to give you an idea, because people like us are asking, uh, are asking questions about it. But... I think that game, especially because, you know, people just, I understand there's different sects of Bioware, but, you know, people look at Mass Effect and they say that's Bioware's last game, right? That's what people do for, yeah. for right or wrong. And I think it's really important that we get away from that and we get back to the point we're talking about Bioware as if they're, which they are, they're a Triple H great developer who have an incredible uh, library of games. That's why, and it, I think it's rare to release, we have betas and stuff, but it's rare to get, I mean, the demo is a beta, but it's rare to get this kind of demo, I think. It feels different for what we usually get. I think it really needs to make a good impact. I think it needs to get people talking. I think you need that social media buzz where everybody's behind it and like, oh yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And I think if it gets that, I think that will then, it, like you just said, you're unsure what it is. I think if they can turn that tide, and you'll see it, you know, even if you're not looking out for it, be it retweets or just the general buzz, I think that's massively important for this. And I think that's, I think they know that too. I think that's why they're releasing it. Yeah, I'm going to it's just going to be really interesting to see how that all goes down really. I keep saying interested but just cuz I just I'm not so I don't know if I'm excited. I just yeah, I'm just so yeah, intrigued to see what's going to go down with Anthem. It sounds ambitious. Like there's a really good article on Polygon that they've gone through a bunch of uh, gameplay and they've got 55 interesting details. Um, you know, they've basically gone to read tweets from creators and they've got I'm not going to read them all, but they've got stuff like indig individual gear doesn't level up. Uh, you can start with any of the four classes. Story progress is per player, but you can do it in a group. Uh, there'll be accessibility items awesome to increase font size. I mean, that is, but it's weird. I mean, stuff like that. How many times have you played a game and you've gone, why is text so small? So I like to think that Bioware is going to leave no stone, uh, no stone unturned. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a big, it's a big risk, right? So, oh, massive, absolutely massive. Uh, are you playing anything else this week, Sam? Because I just realised there is one more thing I will talk about, but it's old. So, if there's anything else you've been playing you'd like to talk about, we will use this period now to smash it out. I started Detroit for the first time. Oh my gosh, that is the best answer ever. Let me know what the what 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 what. It's really really good, but it is outstanding. I would go what? Whoa whoa! I wasn't expecting that, but this everyone says that, right? Everyone says it's great. Yeah, I hate being that guy. Like, yeah, it's the same as everyone said, but yeah, yeah. Why it, so it's good? It's as good as people say. But but why so good? Especially compared to say uh, Beyond Two Souls, which personally I thought was garbage <laughs> well beyond two souls is one of my favorite games ever. i know it was i know it so, was. <laughs> but what is it's, it um, what it's, makes it's so, so good? complex in its branches and its storylines it's like it, it's just like, that stuff mind-boggling on its own and it's also like i know people say he's a bit ham-fisted uh, david cage with his writing and stuff but I, I, I don't really agree i think not many games make you feel uncomfortable and have a powerful message that to the point where I'm just like, oh shit, oh that was hard to watch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and obviously bits of Detroit, people can guess which ones. They they really like resonate. They're really impactful, and I don't think you get those in stories anymore. And the fact that he's brave enough to put that kind of stuff in is really something that I appreciate. And obviously a lot of people don't appreciate um, that. But yeah, I think the whole story, the characters, the story, it's just it's just really damn good. But then again, I like their stuff, so it's like. It's hard because you'd rather get someone who doesn't neither likes nor dislikes them to get on board. Because obviously, I like what Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain did. So, did you? Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this before, but my memory is, is rubbish with that stuff. Did you like Heavy Rain? Heavy Rain was good. It's aged horribly, though. I would have preferred to play it when it um, when yeah. it came out. My point being is, I loved Heavy Rain. I thought Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit, whatever you want to call it, was a game, a literal game of two halves. Uh, yeah. I didn't like. I didn't like Beyond. Do you think? 
I should give this a go, basically, is my point. Yeah, you should give it a go. Absolutely. It's um, it's many of the same, obviously, approaches. You'll still be using your controller to, I don't know, wash dishes and do random <laughs> stuff that you don't really need to be doing. Um, but I think the story is incredibly strong. And it does feel, I'd say, the most cinematic out of his games that he's had. Uh, so, yeah, I think you should definitely give it a go because it's, it's like it's a little bit like the culmination of all, everything he's learned sort of thing. A lot of it feels like Heavy Rain. A lot of it feels like Beyond. And it's the most ambitious. I think if you're going to try anyone, I'd say try that. All right, done. I mean, I can't. You can't say fairer than that, man. I will. Uh, maybe I'll give it a go. It's got to be kind of cheap now. I'm guessing, right? Uh, yeah, I got it for twenty two. Oh, there we go. So that is cheap. All right, all right, all right. Look, I'm, I'm always looking for new stuff to to, to dip my toe into. So all right, I keep an eye out. I keep an eye out. Absolutely. Done and done. Right. So the game I, I mean, we'll finish off this week. It's really old. I played it before. Not going to lie, but I just wanted to go back through it again, and I was showing it to somebody else. Uh, is uh, Valiant Hearts, A Great War by Ubisoft, a game based on the First World War. Have you ever played it? No, I've heard of it, though. It is wonderful. Um, I I can't explain why, because it's the, it, it, I, I call it a puzzle game in many ways. Obviously, it all, it all takes place on a 2D plane, and you're just walking left, right, and so but They're very simple puzzles. It's like, you know... Yeah. It, it's the story. What I like about it is not necessarily the gameplay, but it's the story. It's the way that it makes, as silly as this sound, but it makes the you know the Great War accessible in the sense it tells you these incredible stories that really happened, um, but it doesn't sort of bog you. You, you want to get bogged down. I like getting bogged down with facts when it comes to that stuff, but it doesn't. You know, it, it doesn't throw that in your face. It's there if you want it, but it gives yeah. you the headlines, and it's just the emotion that it creates. Like it tells this wonderful story, uh, and without it, it, it's quite. It's quite it expects a lot from the person playing it as well. It doesn't bang you over the head with the story that it's trying to tell. It yeah. absolutely, you know, lets you, again, it, it lets you go, well, that, what does that mean? And then 20 minutes later, you go, oh, okay, I see they were doing that. And it's just a brilliant game. Like, I was just playing it, and I was like, man, this is just so much fun. I mean, fun is probably not the right word. And it, but it's just a game I thought, I, I remember I talked to Ubisoft years about doing something with it, like, you know, some kind of, you know, retrospective, and I don't think there's enough demand for that, especially from Ubisoft's point of view. I don't think it's sold sold gangbusters uh, or anything like that. But it's just, again, not many. You know, all the games we get focusing on World War One at the moment are stuff like you know Battlefield, and, and that's fine. The Battlefield One is a really, really good video game. It does the similar thing in different ways, but this one arguably goes for your heartstrings more intentionally. So if you don't like that stuff, you probably won't like it. But I really do yeah. think it's one of those underrated gems that not only can you play if you've been playing games for years, but if you never play games, it's very easy. Like I say, it's very accessible. It's very simple. All you're ever really doing is controlling one dude. Uh, you get a dog at one point, but that's as simple as you know, holding left, uh, the left trigger and, uh, and tapping face buttons. And it's not very long, and the music is great, and the production is great, and the way it looks is great. And I sat down and I played, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to talk about this because I just don't think it gets the love that it deserves. Yeah. And I'm pretty, well, that's good then. I'm pretty You're giving it some love. Showcase. I, I am. I'm love. pretty sure. Like I'd forgotten that I, I knew I bought it before, uh, but I went to buy it again because I thought I played it on Xbox 360. I didn't. I'm going to tell you how much it is in about 37 seconds. I think you can play it on your phone. You know, I, I'm it not. Wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. You can play that, Life is Strange on your phone. Yeah, I think you can play it on your phone. I wouldn't do that because I think having the whole production of it is more fun. But it is eleven ninety nine on the PS4. So I would say this: if you if you don't mind really stripped back games, I mean, I, again, here it's described as a two D animated comic book adventure. That is the best way to put it. And you're mixing exploration, action, and puzzles. That's one hundred percent the perfect thing. Um, but if you if you if you like war and you'd like to sort of learn not sort of super loads about it, but get a little bit i i, rec- I th- love it i absolutely love it it's one of my favorite games that nobody talks about so there you go i just wanted to mention that and before next week i will play more resident evil and i will play more of that and i'm going to try and play something else as well maybe i get ace combat <laughs> or Kingdom Hearts. Oh, is, when is that actually out is that literally this 29th. week ah, shit. So a week today ah shit all right so we'll, <laughs> we'll look into how that plays as well Oh, man. All right. Neither of us are going to play that. It's too long and we don't get it. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Sam, anything else you want to throw in the pot? No. Nope. All right, okay. Done. <laughs> Easy. Easy as pie. Uh, so as always, uh, thank you very much for listening. Get in touch. I'm on Twitter at Simon316. Sam is at Sam Bishop. Is it three Ps and a one? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Sam Bishop, PPP1. Go talk to Sam uh, over there. 
Uh, what else do I pimp out? Instagram at Simon316. I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram the other day. And I was so excited because you can now do the swipe up feature. And I did it. And I was nice. like, well, it's all right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure this was something that I should have looked forward to. Uh, but that was cool. Again, all of this is going to be on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com, Forces of the Middle Report Rules. I'm going to put it live today if you are listening to this on the Tuesday in case you want to go over there. Um, that's about it. Again, all supported by Patreon.com, Forces of Simon316. Make sure you tune into the wrestling podcast tomorrow if you're into wrestling and if you are into kingdom hearts especially the guy that did reach out please reach out again and we'll try and sort this out or sam and i will bumble our way through it next week so (laughs) we'll do what we can anyway sam thank you as always for joining me always my pleasure that was good i like that and again if you're into more combat if you're into whatever drop us a line let us know what you're playing right now it's always it's always good to get an update on what's out there and yeah we'll talk to you again next week (laughs) 